So I have two different microphones going. Exactly. Uh, I forgot to put on my smartphone. Just give me one second. Okay. I forgot to put the other smartphone, the other uh, earphone. So let's see if now we are good to go. Hello, oh, people are joining. Hello, hello, people are joining us on Instagram. I'm here now uh, with uh, Debbie Welsh and Bill, uh, her husband, will join us uh, in a moment. And welcome to the 17th episode of Green Light Other Choice. Green Light of the Choice uh, podcast and live talks about the human experience and about uh, how can we save our life with more simplicity. And wow. um, I invited Bill and Debbie to join me today as um, I really recognize and admire in them, uh, not only their traveling, I'm a little bit envious, I must say, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I really admired some life choices and different choices that they, they have been made. Uh, also, and uh, for me, it's really amazing, the special mission they chose as USA citizens traveling the world before the COVID-19 pandemic and this uh, lockdown and these uh, travel restrictions for our safety, for our good. And... Um, I'm very curious what will come up during this conversation because uh, usually it's quite uh, um, quite fluid and uh, many sharings, many learnings come up. Um, but before I will say anything else, I want to introduce uh, Debbie. Uh, uh, is a owner. Um, she has um, a business in. Uh, Pearl Harbor, uh, if I'm uh, right, in Florida, and uh, the Bride's Bouquet uh, does some special, I'll, I'll let you in a minute talk a little bit more about that, Debbie, okay? Uh, okay. But there's like a, de a special uh, decoration, special services to uh, provide a meaningful uh, energy, emotions for a very special day when people decide to join together and start a life together. And um, Bill, uh, there's, uh, I know many things about Bill, but one is that he has many different passions. He has a passion for beer and different yes. types of beer and experimenting beer all over the world. Uh, Bill is also an enthusiast and an avid um, uh, specialist with uh, drones and uh, video and photos and taking perspectives and combining uh, photos and videos to provide a unique um, take about the, uh, of a business, of a landscape, of a part of the a part of the country, a part of nature, and uh, Bill, I'm not sure if Bill, if you also do this with other vehicles, but I know you. Uh, I don't know. Two years ago, three years ago, recovered uh, a MV and no. did quite a, a, an amazing work with it. Uh, Debbie, Bill, tell us a little bit more about uh, that, uh, your work and uh, your passions. You go first, Bill. Well, first of all, can you hear me? Yeah, good, loud and clear. Okay. And, uh, by the way, uh, everyone that is here, please give a thumbs up uh, to check if the sound is reaching you okay. And also type, write down, where are you watching us? Uh, where are you from? Where are you right now watching and listening to us? Okay, go ahead, Bill. Okay, well, yeah, like you said, uh, I am a beer enthusiast. I, I, I like beer. <laughs> awesome. Um, and I do, uh, I'm a drone pilot, flown, I don't know, 40, 45 countries around the world. I've flown for Sea Shepherd wow, uh, to stop amazing. the whaling in Iceland. Um, I've flown a palace in Cartagena. I've flown the Nile River. I've flown big game in Africa. It's just been an amazing life that I've been uh, given the opportunity to do what I've done. Uh, sometimes I can't even believe it. Uh, but with COVID uh, slowing down our travel, and slowing down our wedding business. Uh, you're right, I have a military Humvee. And with that, I was able to start a new business uh, with the tops. It's a convertible. Humvees are convertibles, or they were. The military made convertibles. They're no longer doing that, but there are 200,000 of them out there that need tops. So I'm gonna be a very busy guy. 
Awesome, awesome. We will we'll, we'll get back to we'll get back to that also. And uh, Debbie, how did you start at your business? How did that happen? Well, before I married Bill, um, I was a single mom, three kids, and I needed to make more money than what I could just working in a flower shop. Uh, flower shop was just very minimal pay, and um, I was literally in the poverty level. So. <laughs> I started my own business so that I could make some more money. And um, really, my only goal was to provide food. And um, it turned into so much more. So um, that's one of those things that, you know, um, um, for me, you know, I, I knew God had a plan for me, but I had no idea. And so um, I was very blessed that um, that with hard work, you know, I was able to provide food and also, um, you know, do something that was um, very rewarding for me. So doing someone's wedding flowers and working with them during, you know, a special time, um, you know, creates a relationship that sometimes you'll keep for years. Just like when I met you, Joao, we met walking the Camino de Santiago in Portugal and um, you changed my life. I will never forget you. So, um, oh, so kind of you. <laughs> well, those life experiences, and I don't think you can walk, you know, 15 miles a day with someone for 25 days or 20 days, whatever it was, and and not, um, you know, you, I got, I spent more time with you than most friends that I have. Um, mm -hmm. So even though it was only 20 days. Um, you know, it was a, such a special time in my life. So we got to really know each other and uh, walking and talking and, and um, just having the bare necessities was the best. And, um, and then since then, you know, we have traveled to see you um, mm -hmm. in Portugal and have always tried to stop and visit with you a little while and um and then you've been gracious and kind to show us your city and we appreciate that thank you thank you You're most welcome my, my pleasure uh, that that brings me yes to the first time we've met uh, me and debbie we've met uh, walking it was 2013 if i remember correctly yes um and uh, you started at Porto, or where did you start it? It was at Porto. The, your I community. started in Porto. Yeah. yeah. And I, uh, go ahead. Well, I flew into Lisbon and then took the train to Porto. So yeah. um, that's where I started. And I think I met you like probably the third day in. We met at... Um, yeah, probably the th your third day. Uh, yeah, uh, because I was walking uh, before. But then we kind of synchronized those days. Uh, we might have been at Porto at the same day. Uh, yeah. At the time, I was living at Porto, but I started, as many people know, uh, near Santarém, which is a city to the um, uh, south interior, uh, central in interior of Portugal. But yeah, we, we've met at that mythical place. Do you remember? That yes. family house and of uh, Fernando. Yes. Fernanda, yeah. Yeah, and um, that was a gentleman or a family, a couple. They had some mm -hmm. kids, but yeah. they had built a special place for people, pilgrims that were walking the Camino, and they offered their home. And one of the things I'll never forget is, like, they came home during lunch, their mm -hmm. lunch, in the middle of their day, and cooked um, eight people lunch, and made our, you know, gave us clean sheets and stuff so we could make our bed. And then they rushed back to work to just rush back to cook us dinner. And it was all complimentary. It was donations if we felt led to leave them. Yeah. And um, that night around the kitchen table after they served us dinner, we, um, the lights, the, the light from outside was going down and it was all candlelight. And we found mm -hmm. out that one of the people that we was walking with could play the guitar. Yeah. And he, um, we all were singing in the dark with candlelights, um, the John Lennon song. Do you remember that? 
Yeah, I don't remember specifically the song uh, by John Lennon, but I do remember that moment when it was Alessandro, the Italian man, yes. picked up the guitar. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, uh, Joaquin, it, it is the name of the, yes. the, the guy or the husband. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a second guitar, but yeah, we started singing, laughing, dancing. And, and we uh, had the and the drums, and he kept coming and bringing more instruments for us all to bang around on. Exactly. It was wonderful. <laughs> it was really, really wonderful. And that's uh, that's uh, one amazing, amazing experience that I'll remember always, um, which is not only uh, our energy, and uh, also that uh, family receiving us with the open heart and open yes. heart. Uh, without without actually expecting uh, if someone will give uh, a donation of one euro, nothing, fifty euros, or whatever it is, yes. um, I since then I, I did go back again. Uh, I decided that the next Camino I would start there, and I did. I started the, this my second Camino de Santiago at um, with a girlfriend that I had at the time, mm -hmm. and we started there, and uh, it was really amazing. Uh, the, yeah. Starting that uh, at that moment, so yeah, we we go way back. We, we yes. not only we have all these years in connection, but we had also those experiences with uh, 20, 20 something days walking from near Ponte de Lima. Um, to to Santiago, and it was so. Let me sh share this, and then I'll ask you about your experience, and also then Bill, we'll move on to to other travels and experiences. Which is, there are moments when we share experience with someone that things don't um, don't uh, get planned rationally. People don't choose consciously. Um, I'll do this, and then I'll do that, and I'll go there, and I'll talk with that person, but. Yeah, you froze up, Joel. Hey, uh, what's happening here? <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, it was such an energy that the video paused. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was saying that after that, we, uh, we had that magical moment together, that dinner, that night we started walking the, the following morning, and we kind of left the house at the same uh, hour. And then we kind of kept crossing and continued to talk during that, uh, that first day walking together. And we decided to stay at the same place in Ponte de Lima. And uh, then at some moments I'm like, oh yeah, and where are you going? And where are you going? And next, next uh, tomorrow, where are you going to? And we just fluidly, uh, organically started to walk together as a group. And yeah. it was curious enough that uh, a week later, other uh, people walking, other pilgrims started to referring to us as the group. <laughs> so, oh, here comes the group. Because yes. we were like, joyful and connected and creating yeah. new bonds. And also we were kind of a, 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 a tiny uh, UN because it yes. was some, someone from South Korea, uh, Denmark, Portugal, Italy, the US, Germany. And it's so such a lovely, um, and of course England with with yes, Ben, uh, with the UK, ben. yeah. Uh, it's also such a great energy. And my question to you is, experiences like this, and since we were talking about meeting new people, experiences like this were the the first drive, the first motive for you to start traveling uh, around the world. Well, my first trip out of the country, uh, I was pretty old, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, you know, like in Europe, you're so close to many other countries that you probably mm -hmm. experience other countries very early in life. And mm -hmm. I didn't until I was almost 40. So I never traveled, you know, except for like Mexico, which Mexico to us is kind of like a summer vacation, but it's uh, not really traveling. You know, you're yeah. staying at a resort and someone's doing everything for you. Mm -hmm. where when you travel abroad and you start doing things for yourself, um, it's a different experience. And I found very quickly that that was the experience I liked. And that, um, that I, the thing I liked best about it is when you meet people in other mm -hmm. countries, you learn about how they live and mm -hmm. um, you find out that we have a lot of similarities, like, you know, um, we all have a love of family and a love of friends and 
pretty much if you're a traveler, you have a love of food. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, those were things that we all have in common. And then what I took for granted growing up in the U.S. is, um, you know, some of the things that are very normal for us are very different in other countries. Um, right. And what I found, there were so many things that I liked better. And one of the things is that you tend to go to the grocery store daily and only buy what you need, fresh food. Mm. And here in the States, we tend to buy food for like weeks at a time. And mm. um, so I liked those trips to the grocery store where the markets, like you have markets where we have like grocery stores. Um, I like that you have, you know, um, you have public transit where in most of the United States, we don't have good public transit. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to have a car to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and cities are not very walkable. Um, mm -hmm. They're too spread out. So mm -hmm. there were so many things that I was learning about, um, you know, visiting different places and what it's like. And I just really, really enjoyed and um my favorite experiences are, are when i'm with local people and they can share with me how they actually live and then i felt like i learned something instead of just seeing something so um you know and there's nothing like a local to tell you about um their city because it comes from the love of their heart and it's mm -hmm. just amazing. So um, having, we've met you for coffee and mm -hmm. we've met you for lunch and just those simple pleasures of doing that and speaking to you and hearing about how your mom and your dad and your sister, I love those moments. So yeah. um, those are the things, the reasons why we travel. And then also like when I walked the Camino in Spain, you mm -hmm. know, um, Americans have a, a nasty reputation and it's earned. <laughs> a lot of them have definitely earned it. And right. uh, so it's, um, mm. I, that, that's when Bill and I realized that we had, that we wanted to incorporate into our travel that we were more normal, you know, like um, we're not um, that, most Mar most Americans are just like us, 80%. Mm -hmm. And then right. unfortunately, the 20% that have a lot of money that travel so much and are so nasty sometimes, they're the mm -hmm. ones that so many people are meeting where the 80% mm -hmm. may not have, you know, quite the income to travel abroad or maybe just doesn't have the desire because they're afraid. They don't know how to do yeah. it. And, um, so that's, you know, like, and we have decided that our extra money would all go to travel. Um, instead of buying a lot of things, we would prefer to buy an, ex you know, while you're paying for an experience. So mm -hmm. uh, traveling and being able to meet people is where we spend all of our money. Sounds and good. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, about you, about you, Will, uh, do you remember your first, uh, I don't know, your first impulse, your first uh, big drive to, to go on a trip, to go traveling? Uh, I'm not hearing you, Bill. Can you check the volume? Uh, a little bit better. Uh, see if you can perhaps move it closer to... Yeah, it's a little bit better. Can you test it again now? <laughs> well, um, Bill did travel with, uh, you know, we traveled together to Spain the first time and mm -hmm. um, you know, that was, you know. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Is that the photo when you went to Pamplona? No, that was. I lost uh, everything. 
a little bit. That's oh, I got your sound back. Yeah, yeah, you got your sound back. So talk about uh, Pamplona, Bill. Yeah, I'm sorry, dear. Now I can't even hear you guys. Oh, oh, so I'm 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 just a bystander. Well, we can hear you. (laughs) You can hear me now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So talk about Pamplona. Well, I can't hear you, but what? Um, getting back to Joel's question, uh, I think I uh, got the bug for traveling the same time Deb did. Um, and I mean, we, I think a big part of it, our travel is meeting other people and uh, being the ambassador kind of thing, because we have seen those ugly Americans. We've, we've experienced that too, and it's not fun. And, you know, we don't like the rest of the world to think that they want to avoid Americans because that's uh, who we are. And we've been in that situation where we met a couple of women from Namibia that were going to cancel their trip because they found out two Americans were going to be on that same trip. Only to find out that we had such common interests, Debbie, for one, and the, the knitting and crocheting as one of them did. And we became great friends and we've been to visit them in Nambimbia and their son has been over here to visit us. And it's, it's just unfortunate that Americans can give off that vibe. um, When like Deb said, 80% of us really are pretty good people. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sorry, I can't hear you. (laughs) so one of the things that um happened to me when i was when we were visiting you joao one time Mm -hmm. that was most memorable to me was um the we'd gone to lunch and we were sitting next to a couple that um had she had something that was knitted and i asked you to tell her um, how lovely it was and that I also knit it and crocheted and you talked for me through her so that we could have a brief conversation and then the couple left and we were eating and finishing our meal and we stayed quite a bit longer and then I, I said to you when we were done I said well let's go look at the city and you like we can't leave yet she's coming back and I'm like coming back for what and she had rushed home and brought me back like three things that she had handmade and and knitted and gave to me as a gift and we had only met that day and um I still have them and I just thought that that was Hmm. so gracious and it encouraged me like when we travel I will make some extra things and I give them away to complete strangers. Oh, and, you are um, doing because, that. Yeah. Cause she did that for me. And I remembered how good it made me feel that, um, that she had done something so nice. And so, um, and I thought, wow, if I, if I can make, or I can offer that same feeling to somewhere else, it's kind of like paying it forward. She gave yeah. it to me and I gave something to somebody else. So Wow, that, that's amazing. That's that's really amazing. Um, and th- yeah, that reminds me of that lunch and that conversation and that uh, special lady that decided to offer. They were talking about their uh, either their son or their children and uh, how, how things are w- were going for them. Um, and yeah, I, I remember you sharing also stories about um, uh, different but similar experiences and conversations like that. Uh, For example, when you were in Africa, I'm not sure if it was uh, what Bill was talking about or if it was different. And then I believe it was in one country in Africa where you met someone from the north of Europe. And then later, uh, I don't know when, two years later, you went to uh, visit and to stay with them. That was uh, the, the couple. How did that happen? Well, the, the two women that were from Namibia were school teachers, and we met them on a tour in Cappadocia, Turkey. We were on the same tour bus, and they were the couple. They were they were just girlfriends. They were friends that were teachers together, and they um, almost canceled their trip because they didn't want to be on a sm- small van with like seven people and 
they thought maybe two obnoxious people. So, but they didn't, fortunately. And um, we ended up um, finding out that we had a lot in common and they invited us to come to Namibia. And at the time, I didn't even know where that was in Africa. And I had to apologize to them that I didn't know where that was. And, um, and that if they really meant it, we would try to visit someday. And about two years later, I was able to find a good price on a ticket to go visit. And it was an incredible experience. Namibia is just a beautiful country. And they were so kind to give us so, so much information. They let us stay in their home. And then they had a beach house that they let us stay in. And they lent us their car. <laughs> I mean, wow. Yeah. And, uh, we had taken, um, they both do a lot of charity work for um, an organization. And so when they, when we said we were coming over, they asked us if we would bring um, old clothing um, that we could donate. So we, you know, um, in fact, you were with us. We flew through Lisbon on the way to Namibia uh -huh. and, um, the we brought like four great big bags of stuff to give away in Africa. And I really wasn't sure where we were going to put it all when we were visiting with you. And when we landed and we had those four bags, customs said to us, you cannot take this out of the airport, but we'll store it for you. <laughs> wow. And I thought, perfect. <laughs> That couldn't have worked out any better yeah, because I had no sense. idea where we were going to put these four 50 pound bags. Exactly. And, uh, and th that is exactly for me uh, one example of what you both were saying. Uh, sometimes people don't know how to, how to go yeah. on a travel, how to deal with uh, an unforeseen uh, situation. Uh, Bill, is there a, a similar situation that uh, something happened, some, some uh, unforeseen event? And uh, you like you both adapted in a way that you could not uh, could not anticipate it. Well, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. You can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Oh, great. Um, well, I I think you know we've been on a couple of cruises and been to Europe where you know we've met people on the ship and then you try to explain to them what it's going to be like when they get around people that you know, aren't Americans. And uh, what, one thing that really amazes me is why a lot of Americans think that everybody takes U.S. dollars. I, I don't, they don't think they need to convert their money uh, because everybody takes American money. And that's just not the case, <laughs> you know? Like, we don't take, you know, francs. We don't take euros. They, you know, so... But even though we try to educate people, it doesn't always work mm. until I think after they've made the mistake and then they realize, oh, wow, mm. you know what? Somebody tried to tell us this and we didn't listen. <laughs> right. And the light comes on. We've, we've made lots of mistakes traveling. Oh, and, you sure. know, but it's a learning experience. And um, you just, you know, you it always works out. So you oh, just yeah. keep you know, keep going. Um, I think the, the biggest thing I was sometimes worried about is getting lost and not okay. knowing where to go. And, um, and then I'm like, I have to tell myself, well, if you get lost, you know, you can figure it out. It's not like I'm going to die just because I took the wrong turn. So uh, yeah. that, that, uh, that brings to my mind two things. One is, um, uh, well, first of all, what Bill just said, uh, yeah. I, I noticed Bill said, well, that's part of the fun. Yes. That's the learning experience, making that mistake and realizing, oh, this is different from what I know. This yeah. is different from my world. So in, in a sense, it's really like an um, open mind experience, like you're opening yeah. up your, uh, your view of the world. 
And uh, I remember uh, when I did with a friend and my sister uh, the, uh, in Interrail. In Interrail, uh, I'm not sure if you have something similar in the US. Uh, it's like you buy a, a ticket for a train and it's valid um, on uh, different countries in Europe, depending which portion you buy, which uh, uh, level you buy. Uh, and for some, it's just uh, it's just that one big ticket. It's valid uh, in different kind of regional uh, short distance trains. If you want a fast long distance train, you might have to uh, book a reservation, and that's pretty much it. Um, so we were traveling, and we ended up uh, spending most of the time in Italy. Uh, also, without expecting, we were supposed to go to Greece and go to blah blah blah. <laughs> but at the moment, me and my sister, we decided. Uh, probably better to use the days um, in a different way. Uh, so at the time, I guess we were we were in Palermo. That that was it. We were in Palermo on the island, and first big experience was uh, we were uh, getting to the island. Uh, we were getting to the island either late afternoon or, be or beginning of the night. I'm not sure. Ex I don't remember it precisely. And the train stops. And takes a while to continue, and then we hear this. This sounds like chuk, 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 chuk. you're like, <laughs> what's happening? And then, after we were already on a big boat, a big ferry, realized that they dis disassembled the train, the carriage, put it on a on a vessel, on a ferry, to go to the island, assemble back the train again, and continue to to the city of Palermo. And I was like. Is that possible? Yeah. Is that something yeah. that, wow. that happens? <laughs> yeah. That's and cool. then uh, on the visiting day in Palermo, we actually got lost. Uh, we, we had an app. We went to like a local street market. And uh, my sister was looking at the map. Oh, I think it's that way. I, I was looking at the map. I think it's that way. <laughs> neither of us, were, <laughs> neither of us was us. right. Neither yeah. of us was right. And it was so amazing and so wonderful that we were walking on a street. Um, I will not say a, um, a bad-looking street or uh, like you, those kind of streets where you're looking over your shoulder, you know. It was not exactly like that, but it was uh, pretty much deserted. Uh, there was no, not everyone. Uh, it was um, not, uh, not having people walking. And then there was two or three men um, at the entrance of a shop, uh, which turned out to be a bakery. And uh, they looked at us and they say, in Italian, of course, where are you going? That way? No, 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 no. If you go that way, people will approach you to rob you. <laughs> and we were like, oh, OK. Uh, can we get some bread? Uh, then we, we bought some bread for them. <laughs> <laughs> and we continued in the direction that they pointed us. And they didn't have to do that, right? It's just like that basic human level where we, uh, um, we meet as humans. Uh, and yeah. that, that is a treasure, precious moment that I keep until, uh, until today. Um, yeah, and you sharing just, uh, just popped up that in my mind. Uh, so, Bill, uh, for you, with I, that I part you were, of fun and those mistakes, what, what else is there? Well, I, I mean, you just brought that up uh, regarding uh, helping people is is the thing to do, and uh, and it is. There are some countries, though, where that helping hand that's not necessarily at all what it is. <laughs> so, I mean, we've been taken for a ride a couple of times in different countries where they appeared on the outside to be also helpful, but mm. actually had their hand out. You know, they, they wanted something In to help terms. us. Yeah. Uh, and again, I think that's country specific. Uh, okay. I don't think we found that in Europe anywhere, mm -hmm. uh, but South America, yeah, Africa, mm. you know, there, there's mm. some, and, and I get it. I mean, they really don't have a means of, making any money so yeah. they're going to do whatever they can to make a little bit of, yeah. of money and if that's pretty much the, main, the mainstream. mainstream of income they want to get some home for their families uh, i yeah. had that in southeast uh, asia uh, and there was this uh, lady in um, 
uh, it was it was it was an annoy I, I guess it was annoy uh, annoy in vietnam uh, which has an amazing act she she dresses up with with the hat with the typical clothes with that um, uh, wooden bar uh, with like fruit and the other mm -hmm. goods like in a you know in the balance and uh, we were looking it was like um, a night market and we were looking we're in a small group of seven or eight and we we're like oh interesting oh oh that's interesting the typical uh, you know dress and the hat and so on and uh, she noticed that we were looking at her oh you like you like picture picture takes the thing yeah. off her shoulder puts on your shoulder takes the head puts it on your head and photo photo and so everyone on the group takes a turn and they and they gets the photo and after everyone is satisfied with the photo uh, pineapple manga buy pineapple manga w w which one do you want <laughs> <laughs> yeah and what you, what you're going to say i mean she she has to bring money to their to the to her family right and yeah. she already gave you something and she gave you an experience she didn't give you yeah yeah, yeah. true the experiences that we we've, we've had throughout the world have been unbelievable and um and i just had this experience earlier today with a, an old friend of mine who just lost his wife and he told me we had a game plan our game plan was we were going to slow down the business and we were going to travel around the world like Bill and Deb. And she got cancer and died. It didn't happen. His game plan totally fell apart. And they never got to experience what Debbie and I have had the opportunity. And that's not the first time we've heard that. So the, the moral of the story is travel when you can. Don't wait until it's more convenient yeah because that day may never come yeah and people keep on waiting and then it might just never come yeah yeah i think wow. it's important to you know like our passion is travel but whether whatever your passion is don't wait because you may miss your opportunity and um so you know live your best life that's a saying that they have here um so live your best life every day. So we've had a pandemic for a year now. Mm -hmm. And even with that, you still have to live your best life. And it's different mm. right now. Like right. we're, you know, things are different, but you still have many opportunities to follow some of your passions. So maybe this year, you know, you've read more or you've gardened or you've stayed at home, but maybe you fixed up your house a little bit more yeah. or you started to write a book that you never had time for. Um, or you started a, you know, this podcast. So, uh, you know, these are all things that maybe if there hadn't been a pandemic, maybe we would have gone in a different direction. So sure. there's still things that have happened this year that have been very positive. Yeah, totally. Uh, we don't control everything, not, not no. even close, not even close, but we can do the best we can with the circumstances and the, uh, with what we have available yeah i believe that and uh, that's also something that i uh, got uh, stronger in me uh, while we walked the first camino uh, yeah. i'm wondering debbie if you experienced something similar with other travels with other trips um i mean i'm a big planner so i like to plan everything okay and then we go and we try to leave you know room for a serendipitous so mm -hmm. one of the things that happened when I was walking the Camino with you is as a group, we just kind of, no one ever really discussed us walking as the group, but it just happened. So that was yeah. very serendipitous. Um, but as we were walking, we made the decision one day to go off of the main trail and go to this uh, waterfall and to take yeah. our sandwiches there. And we knew that we would get into town much later than usual because we were making this stop. And then when we made, we got into town, we were like, there was no room in the inn anywhere. It was totally full. 
and yeah. we're sitting on a curb outside a building or outside a little restaurant and someone approached you and said, are you looking for a place to stay? And you said, yes. And you talked to him in Portuguese and he says, my mother has an apartment and I'll be back in a half hour with the keys. And he asked us how much we could pay and we told him how much it would cost us to stay in a hostel. And he said, I will do it for the same price. And when he came back, we had a whole apartment and we all had real beds and private rooms and bathrooms yeah. and a kitchen. And exactly. we hadn't had that. <laughs> but here it was, it just like, it just came. And we had no idea we really kind of thought we might be sleeping on the streets that night. <laughs> but yeah, kind of. The, <laughs> remember that? And in the <laughs> end, we got a better apartment than we could have ever expected. I have no idea why he just let us in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have any, any idea, no, too, but I'm you. glad that he did. Yeah, me too. I mean, but I don't know if I would just approach seven people on the street right. and give the keys to my house. <laughs> and that's what that man did. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah. Sure, the, the apartment was empty, but still, uh, it, it did that. And uh, previously, uh, that reminds me, Bill, um, sometimes, of course, uh, plans, uh, they are just what they are, and then the moments like this happen, and um, people uh, also want to help us, and, uh, of course, there are some situations or countries or specific regions where it would be useful and to be more aware, to be more attentive to um, the, the, the help that comes with the uh, asks of something in return. And I was awful remembering a specific situation. I lived in India, uh, in Calcutta. Um, what will be, for you, Bill and Debbie, what will be uh, like um, uh, the major principle uh, care, uh, the major uh, attention that you have when you are traveling to protect yourselves or to be aware of certain situations, uh, what do you pay attention to? I think Deb um, is more in tune with it than what I am. I'm kind of a trusting person and just will go off anywhere and not even think about it. Okay. Um, but she's more uh, keen on uh, body language of other people yeah. around us um, and trying to keep us always knows where the embassy is because you never know. Okay. And you're going to have to get there. Uh, okay. But I'm, I guess I'm a, just a trusting person. And I mean, <laughs> you can hit me with a ball bat and I'm still going to say, wow, that, that was really cool. <laughs> you know, I just, you know, yeah, I just, I mean, for I me, it's body language. In, in and, um, and I always have one big rule of thumb when I'm traveling. Like, mm. um, if you look around, Mm -hmm. And you see that there's families out with children, young children or families, and they're mm -hmm. out, even though it would be much later than what most Americans would be out with their families. Okay. That's yeah. a rule of thumb for me is that um, as you see families, you're probably in a safe area and you probably, it's probably okay to stay out. Once you start seeing the families disappear, to me, that's a clue that we should go home, you know, back okay. to our place, you know. And um, so that's one of the things that I've done is just kind of look at that. And um, also, I try to not stay out later than, um, than the metro, you know, like okay. being able to take the metro home, then you're not depending on someone who might pick you up and have a different uh, thing in mind. So like in certain countries, being picked up late at night um, could make you a target. And so, mm -hmm. um, and even when I arrived in Porto, I took the train from Lisbon to Porto and I hadn't even opened up my mouth and I had just walked out of the train station and someone said to me, um, you're an American. And he started to talk to me. And I thought, OK, one, um, I felt like he had kind of targeted me. And so I just turned around right away and went back into the train station because um, I did not get a good feeling from him. So I really do kind of depend on vibes. And um, 
and he, I think he was probably trying to rob me to be honest with you. Um, okay. but I walked back into the train station and I waited till he left. And then when there was a big influx of locals getting off of a train and walking to the bus station, which is where I needed to go, I walked with them. So instead of being by myself, I walked with a group of people. Yeah. And so um, we really have not had um, any bad, bad experiences like that. Um, we were walking in Madrid one time, but this is just common sense. And we walked down a street and there was like all, all of the sudden, there was no mil uh, no people and a very, very mm. strong military um, uh, presence, like only military. And yeah. they were around a, a, a government building. And I'm mm. like, I don't know what's going on, but there's no civilians here at all, not a single one. And there's military, we need to go the opposite direction. <laughs> So, and I never did find out what was going on there. It wasn't important. We no. went back into um, the streets we were on and um, I don't know what that was about, but we've been very lucky. We've not, um, Bill's been pickpocketed once, but that's his fault because he always left his wallet in his back pocket and never listened to me. And, uh, and so only once and the rest of the time, nothing, nothing else. No one's ever stolen anything from us. No one has hurt us. No one's threatened us. Um, it's been a very, very good experience. And so just like here in, in at, at our, where we live, we would, I would use the same common sense. I wouldn't be out mm -hmm. too late yeah. and I wouldn't go into the wrong neighborhoods and, um, you know, you just have to kind of use your common sense. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, that also brings to, to my mind, uh, Bill, you uh, focus more, I don't not say more, but you, you, you have a, ten, uh, you have, um, a keen, um, what's the word? Uh, you have a keen high for perspective and for buildings and for street art. I want to know a little bit more about that and how that combines with you being a, um, uh, piloting drones and uh, uh, taking photos and making video with drones. Uh, is that something that came together? Did it develop along the way? Uh, it's, it was always, um, I guess, a passion I had. Uh, back mm. in the 80s, I wanted to fly helicopters. And uh, it's not easy to fly a helicopter. <laughs> so I can imagine. Uh, moving through the years, it's gotten much easier with the technology that's gone into the drones that, yeah. uh, you know, they pretty much fly themselves. Uh, but just the being able to fly at the different places, especially with you when we were to, uh, oh, where we went to? Uh, Quinta do Mocho. Yeah. Where they yeah. have the, 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 All the, the buildings. The buildings. Yes, yeah. that was amazing. I really, really enjoyed that. And I had read about him, that painter, um, uh -huh. and I thought, wow, I've got a Astro, Astro, Astra, I think is his name. Yeah, exactly. And I've since chatted with him again. Um, he comes to New York, he goes back and forth, and he's still painting, you know, buildings. So it's cool. I awesome. don't think we would have found that, Joel, if you hadn't have taken us there. No. Yeah, I, I remember that even myself, I misunderstood the place and we first went to somewhere else and then, oh, it's not here. <laughs> let's, yeah. go, let's go to the proper neighborhood. Um, but yeah, it's not quite, uh, it's not quite direct and easy to, to get there uh, if you don't know the, the place exactly. Um, so, B Bill, with that, uh, you first started with the helicopters, I understood, and you... Uh, got uh, developed uh, an interest with drones and i've been also uh can, can i say you also are, are like a tester you continue to have a yes. kind of a partnership with uh, yeah. the the dji is that it not with dji but with some other companies i okay. was a test pilot for them and they would send me their drones to test them and those companies have since folded uh dji is without a doubt the best I mean, they really are good at what they do. Yeah. Um, and I have a couple of them 
<laughs> DJI machines. And you know, sure. when you go out, they're going to work every time. Uh -huh. They always work. And uh, I got to imagine yeah. that that's got to be really fun to do that. It is. Um, but we, Debbie and I have seen a, a lot of changes in the uh, ability to fly drones around the world. Uh, you know, four times to Iceland and, and all the Scandinavian countries and a couple of few times to Africa. And every time that we go back, there's a new sign with a picture of a drone and a circle and a slash to it, meaning no drones. So drone flying has gotten... Uh, difficult mm. now around the world. They just, and I understand part of that is uh, part of its privacy. And part of it is they people just don't want to be bothered because not every pilot is sensitive to the people around them. Um, right. In my situation with Debbie, we always try to go out early in the morning when there were no people around because uh, I just never wanted to bother anybody. And I didn't want anybody bothering me. It's, you know, it's a dangerous situation. If, you know, you lose the machine and it hits some or somebody. It can be costly. So, uh, but a lot, there are a lot of pilots out there that really don't care what anybody thinks. Mm -hmm. And it was about getting the, the pictures. It was about getting the video that I needed. And now I'm more interested in the helicopters again because it's coming back to the flying, just the flying of the machine, not necessarily capturing anything, just flight. Right. And so I've been watching some of my friends that uh, got me involved in drones and are now into helicopters because I think a lot of us are feeling that same way. Let's just get back to the, the machine flying through the air and the beauty of that. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, with, with that, uh, the street art came uh, during the drone exploration or how did the street art uh, came into your life? The what? Street art. Uh, admiring oh, the, 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 street the, the art. Yeah. He had done, he was interviewed by somebody that was, uh, oh, you know what it was? I know what it was. D DJI had contacted him and gave him a drone mm. to test mm -hmm. and do a commercial for DJI. Mm -hmm. That's how that started. And I saw the commercial and I thought, I've got to go there. And then when we were going to Lisbon, I thought, oh, here we go. This is a perfect opportunity. And you took us out there. And that was a oh, that was a dream come true that day. That was awesome. Awesome. Being able to fly the same place they did the commercial was incredible. Yeah, yeah. I I, I remember your your um, your face and you were you were really My enjoying the, enjoying the <laughs> moment. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Good. I, I'm, I'm glad to know that. It was um, it is something that I uh, noticed and um, yeah, became self-aware. Uh, that is really uh, embedded in me. It's really part of my nature to yeah, help people uh, around and uh, some sort of, I'm not sure if intermediary or concierge. <laughs> to, I, I still remember, I'm not sure if it was, if it was uh, Ben in the first Camino. Or if it was you, Debbie, someone at some moment said, you're like our guide. You're like the concierge. <laughs> that, so I had the yeah. seeds of the current program that I designed, the human development program of Greenlight Transformation Walk for uh, ancestral and uh, historical uh, trails. Uh, I already had the seed there. I already had the seed of uh, so having an experience. So when do you think you'll be able to, to guide your next trail? Oh, so yeah, uh, for the moment, uh, what is happening is, let me just check for one second here on Instagram, something mm -hmm. happened with my mobile phone. Uh, so what, hap what is happening is, um, of course, there's still a lockdown and there's still, um, the borders are still closed with Spain, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, there's no chance to, to cross the, the border to Spain. So on the Camino de Santiago, I imagine, and this is part speculation, part my interpretation of the restrictions and of the um, uh, people, what people are uh, saying uh, from Spanish government and so on, uh, probably only this September, like late, late September uh, mm -hmm. or beginning of wow. October, uh, to go for a week with a very small group, like less than six people, 
and of course with all the precautions with all the uh, complying with all the sanitization and hygiene measures and uh, things that are required uh, to prevent from COVID-19, which is why uh, I decided to do also here in Portugal for the for the next months. Uh, mm -hmm. We have amazing, beautiful trails in nature and also by the sea here in Portugal. The next one, uh, if there's a minimum of participants registering uh, and applications are open, uh, we will do on what is called the Fisherman's Trail here in uh, here in Portugal, which is by the coast. Yeah. And we can uh, we can we probably will go from north to south, and we will end on a similar. Um, do you remember Finisterre in uh, Galicia? Yeah. In Spain? yeah. So here in Portugal we have um, a town called Sagres, which also has uh, that kind of. Uh, yeah. Earth, land, land meets the sea, kind yeah. of uh, kind of place, and it's really amazing view, amazing sunset, and uh, it's possible for that trail to end just there, just you in front of the sea, like in front of, uh, of the, the end of the world. I can't, I can't wait to get back to Portugal and Lagos, and uh, I mean, I want to walk that trail with you. I want to go on the fisherman's trail. Love Lagos. I mean, let, let, let's talk. Bring bring a small group, and we'll have like exclusive dates for you guys. That I would love, be great. I, I, I love will to bring, make that we'll will bring the drone. Bill will bring the drone oh. to to tape us to document to, to it. us exactly. <laughs> the documentary, yep. it's amazing, and um, I most likely will do also weather in Portugal. Just not sure if uh, on the natural park in the north, which is called the uh, Jerez. Mm -hmm. Or in the interior of Portugal, in the, some small mountains, which the nature and the the, the creeks and the rivers—it's uh, really really beautiful. The the trails there. I want to to go there and get more deeper into that place and to figure out exactly the, the portion uh, of the walking that uh, the the group will do with me. And um, I guess pretty much for that uh, that that is it for now. At least with the, the information that I have available. Of course, uh, I already see the, the next step, which is after uh, things cool down and the travel restrictions uh, go away and it's possible to travel with different conditions and with different uh, assurance to other parts of the world, uh, I want to walk a trail, a specific ancient trail, which is the brother of Camino de Santiago. I want to do it in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, I have oh. also the idea, yeah, there, there's a huge, uh, not huge, but there's a significant trail there, um, which you, people will go also from temple to temple, from town to town. Mm -hmm. And it's more like, a, as I understood it, as I, as I read about it, more of a local kind of thing, uh, not so much the touristic uh, places and so on. And um, I also want to do it in the US, but I have to I have to know. I want to prepare better for that. I'm not sure which trail. <laughs> I'm not sure if which trail if I'll go to Utah. Appalachian if I will trail. Go to, exactly. If I'll go to the Appalachian Trail, because it's the requirements are different. Uh, yes. with, you have to uh, carry your own food and your own tent. Exactly. And everything. Exactly. And your own water. <laughs> also, <laughs> also that. And um, with that said, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to really missing uh, doing that and delivering that program. I did manage uh, last summer, I didn't manage to do one because I realized that Greenlight, uh, this brand that I'm launching and uh, the Greenlight Transformation Walk, uh, really wants to make a difference. So as a contribution to the community, uh, each year, with the with part of the profit, uh, I will deliver pro bono uh, an edition of the Green Line Transformation Walk uh, on a trail of my choosing. Mostly, it will be on Camino de Santiago, but that will be exclusive for educators who are mm -hmm. really making a difference, and for uh, social workers or social entrepreneurs that are really making an impact and making a difference in their communities. Right. That's and uh, everyone that subscribes, everyone that participates on uh, a green light program will be automatically also contributing to 
uh, someone else participating and getting the same kind of experience and same kind of development and transformation. So last mm -hmm. summer, I managed to do one of those. And I, I got overbooking. I got a little bit over the, the maximum of people, <laughs> but it turned out to be just a marvelous group. And oh, uh, their their commitment, their delivery to the experience, their, their openness about uh, knowing more about themselves, about uh, uh, practicing uh, what I was inviting them to practice and uh, uh, sharing the way and some at some moments with the, um, uh, not only with the, the branching out to other areas in their life, but that also at some moments going deeper. Uh, there was this one morning that was uh, an amazing group sharing in the group coaching moment that we have, uh, was just one of the things included. There was this one man, a teacher, uh, and he was like, we just had the most amazing, strange day yesterday. Uh, I, and one thing uh, that was really different, Debbie, uh, you mm -hmm. remember we walked in August, right? Mm -hmm. So last year with this specific group, it was the third week of August. So okay. in the north of Spain, instead of being that temperature like really hot, like uh, yeah, not totally cold, not so cold, but it was raining. Oh. It was raining all week long. And yeah. of course, yeah. we, we we brought summer clothes, of yeah. course, with, with a raincoat, a really yeah. white uh, raincoat, but uh, we were not actually prepared. So on one day, it was really raining hard. And uh, we, we were like, okay, like, let's practice acceptance. We cannot change the rain. Uh, we can yeah. just choose... Either we walk or not, either we wait or not, or either we change and not walk or whatever. But yeah. let's let's enjoy the most we can. At some moment, it stopped. We got to a cafe. And of course, as you know, um, although it's a little bit different now, but there's no booking of the, the public hostels yeah. that support the Camino. And yeah. uh, there was this like really, uh, I, I really love that hostel. Uh, I, we didn't, uh, yeah, we didn't cross there. We didn't slap there the, the time we walked together. Uh, because they are a community uh, hostel, really just to support people walking. And they also, uh, they only accept donations. They don't have a price. Uh, mm -hmm. People uh, pay what they can, if they can. Right. So uh, I was calling them two weeks before. Uh, yeah, yes, we are open even now with the pandemic. We are taking precautions. We are doing this and this and that. And we are open. And today, there was only one person that slept here. And they have like 10, 12 places. Uh, a week later, I was like, everything okay? You're still, yeah, yeah, we are okay. We are still open. And today, only one person slept here. Okay. In the, in the, the, the day that we were supposed to sleep there, yeah. I, I called the man. Yeah. Well, I know uh, we, maybe we, we should talk later. Uh, so just take your time, really enjoy the way, really enjoy the walking, uh, no rush, no, no, without stressing. I said, yeah, great. That's exactly what we, we, that we, what we want. Uh, and we'll talk later on uh, and I'll tell you how many beds are available. So we were uh, eight altogether and uh, he called me back. Hey, so uh, I already have two people, and I just got a call from a group of four people that are planning to sleep here today. <laughs> and if they do, we don't have enough beds for everyone. And we yeah. keep with the, the precautions and the, keep uh, following the rules uh -huh. of the health uh, organization, so on and so on. It's like, okay, we will continue walking. And when we are closer, so when we are closer, it stopped rain. We got to a cafe. I called. Not enough pets. Oh, no. <laughs> and the group decided to uh, continue to walk to the, at least part of the group, to continue to walk to the next, the next hostel. We got there. We got really, um, uh, we, had, we were hit pretty hard with, uh, with heavy rain. Uh, other people went um, uh, and uh, went and share a cab there, and that's also totally okay. Depends on the how people are physically and their health situation and so on. And what happened was, the next morning people were sharing, and this teacher, this man says, "You know, you are really surprising me because I thought you'll be like a kind of soccer or football coach 
who is pushing us, who is uh, uh, up, up, uprising uh, and uh, pushing us and uh, giving us strength and uh, gi giving us motivation and come on, you can do it and so on and so on. And you are not doing that. You're just allowing for each one to go along at their own pace and also develop and discover more about themselves at their own pace without judging and also allowing and even open, uh, giving us a chance to know a little bit more about our humanity and our vulnerability and choosing what makes, uh, what makes sense for each one. And when he said that, I was like, yeah, that, that, that's a big part of it. Yeah. That's, a, that's a big part of it. Instead of, you have to do this. You have to yeah. walk this way. You, you have yeah. to make that choice. You have yeah. to do Some people like structure and some people don't. Well, and the whole reason... What I, what I discovered is that yeah. there's a balance in my program where I give structure yeah. and people have space to choose and to, and to behave and yeah. to do what they, what they want. Because it's exactly like that, Bill. Um, People, some people want really uh, more structure and others don't. And, you do. and if I impose my will, I'm taking away choice, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're, you're I, right. I prefer to give choice and to give the, the, the structure uh, in, a personalized, uh, in a personalized way. So I'm really looking forward to, to have a, a group like that again. And uh, let's see if it happens in, here in the South uh, southwest coast of portugal uh, in that fisherman's trail uh, or late late in the year in the camino de santiago and if not then again next year uh, yeah. with all these turns and upside downs uh, it has been hard yeah and uh, i'm i'm about to to, to launch uh, two digital products to one will be an ebook another will be a kind of online course slash group support development to help people in their uh, in their thing in their life to savor their life with more choices. Well, when this is when we're able to travel from the U.S. back to Portugal again, we'll have to get a hold of uh, different people and see if they'll meet us and walk you know that fisherman's trail. That would so, be lovely. Yeah, it would be it would be great. So anyway, it's been great talking to you, Joel. I hope you've. Uh, Thank you. you know, Thank you. I'm really and, excited uh, about your project. Awesome. Thank you for saying that. Um, and I realized that we are a little bit over one hour now. And uh, uh, just before we finish, can we have just uh, some final uh, quick answer questions from, sure. from you two? You, yeah. can you can either take turns. Uh, it'll be like uh, more or less six questions. And, okay. uh, and then we say our goodbyes. And uh, uh, but uh, before that, uh, how can uh, Debbie? How can people find uh, your business? Uh, you have uh, Instagram page, Facebook, uh, some other online well, place people can look. Um, you know, the wedding flower business is kind of doing. It's doing well despite everything that's going on. So, but people find me on. Uh, Facebook or Instagram, and it's the Brides Bouquet Palm Harbor. And um, we are actually kind of stepping it back a little bit because, you know, we're in our 60s and we still um, enjoy the work, but we're trying to take it back just a little tiny bit so that um, when the world does open back up, we're back out there traveling. So, awesome. Awesome. yeah, that's the plan. Awesome. Uh, and Bill, uh, with uh, everything that you have been doing, uh, how can people uh, get in touch with you to know uh, what they can do with you, either with drones or uh, if they want their UMV uh, <laughs> recovered? <laughs> well, I have how, can people, how can people yeah, reach out? I'm all over Facebook. Uh, you know, all you need to do is Google my name and type in Humvee or drone. I'm going to come up. I mean, people from all over the world find me i'm on youtube i'm everywhere awesome Easy awesome me. yeah just, just search google for bill welch or william yep. welch and yep. the drones and you will find them you will find yep. them yep. Uh, exactly. thank you very much for the, for this lovely conversation and i i'm, I'm a little bit a bit sad because we didn't spoke um, more about your trips inside the u.s 
during these last months, but maybe at another time we can uh, we can share a little bit about that. Um, and we'll have even so, more experience to share. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so just before we go, uh, tell me, yeah, we can we can start with this one. Uh, after everything is uh, in a different way and travels are the, are possible in a different way, uh, what first destination pops up in your mind now that you would like to go? Well, that's a tough one. Where do you want to go first, Bill? Well, it's not the only place. Iceland just keeps pulling me back. I really. Okay. But uh, but having said that, you know Portugal is right there behind Iceland. It really is. So uh, yeah. I would like to go to Iceland and do all of the Scandinavian countries and then fly into Lisbon and then fly home. Yeah. So, and I have to go to Scotland again. So it's probably going to be Iceland, Scotland, yeah. Scotland uh, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Fenway to visit friends. And then, yeah, exactly. you know, and then back to Lisbon and then back home. We've discussed that we're going to need at least two months. People don't <laughs> have that. They don't have that luxury that we have where we have friends in all those countries that are dying to have us come visit to show us more stuff. Well, I don't know if they're dying to have us, but I'm dying to see them. <laughs> me? They're dying to have me? <laughs> well, there is always awesome. that here. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, and uh, we, with all uh, with all those travels, with all those learnings and uh, experiences, uh, tell me, uh, tell it this not not only to me, to, but to, to whoever uh, is watching out there. What would be one learning that you made along all these years? That would be one learning that you, you will give, uh, let's say, a, a young uh, a young child that is uh, starting her own uh, path, her own life on this planet? Oh, boy, that's, that's yeah. an easy one for me. I, uh, language, language is power. Wow. Learn every language you can possibly learn and use it in the countries that use that language. Because language, I wish, I really wished I would have learned you know, I mean, I know the Pope and there are people that can speak 10, 11 languages. I mean, that is amazing, but that is fantastic. I wish I could do that because communication in somebody's uh, own language is, is great. I mean, my hat's off to you. Your English is excellent. Well, thank you very much. So thank is you very Portuguese. much. <laughs> What's that? I said, so is his Portuguese. <laughs> yeah, I bet his Portuguese is pretty good too. Yeah. And uh, how about you, Debbie? Do you have like when learning that pops up that you like to share with someone else? I think that um, when we're younger, it's um, inbred in us that success mm -hmm. is um, maybe getting a great job or success mm -hmm. is buying a home and success is starting a family. Um, and I think that success would be a little different that mm -hmm. I think that if you, um, maybe travel before you make all of those big commitments, I think that it would be, um, that's a great education. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody should travel a bit before they get ingrained in their whole mm -hmm. life. Um, so that would be my advice to someone younger is to, um, to take those, take, you know, like I think Europe calls it a gap year and we don't really do that here. So, but mm -hmm. I would encourage, uh, people in the United States that have young, you know, college age kids to do a gap year and go see the world. And, um, I think their perspective would change forever and that it would benefit, the world community to, um, you know, that people would, would be, you'd see how small the world really is and how much mm -hmm. we're really so much alike each other. And I just think that maybe it could even stop wars. If you get yeah. to know people in different countries, um, maybe it would make a big difference. 
Uh, I gotta say, I totally subscribe uh, what you just said, you both. Uh, language will bring us together, communication will bring us together, and uh, yeah, for example, the gap year will break many, many walls, will break uh, the distance, uh, the, 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 internal, the internal mental distance that yeah. uh, we, we get from, you know, TV, from stories that we, yes. hear, we hear in our families. And um, that's also been a great uh, deal, a great part of my experience also. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you very much for, for sharing that. And with that said, uh, in all those travels, um, what have you learned for yourself um, because you were watching others? What did you learn by watching other people in other countries? Learn about yourself, I mean. Um, I mean, the biggest thing I've learned about travel is that you don't need a lot to do it. So, and you don't, and that the less that you carry, um, mm. like luggage, um, mm. you know, we're a big one for just carrying a small bag because that's all you need. And it'll make the experience of traveling so much easier. Um, and you realize that you don't need all that stuff anyway. So, um, that's probably the biggest thing for me is to unplug a little bit, you know, not be on social media every day, actually experience it. Mm. And, um, and yeah, it's great to share with other people what you're seeing that they may not ever get to see in person. But, um, you know, just remember to put the phone down so that you can actually experience it yourself. Yeah. And it's said over and over again, it's, but it's not the destination, it's the journey. Yep. Yep. And you never know how that's all going to unfold. So yeah. um, that's exciting to me. I like, you know, I like to be surprised a little bit. <laughs> so, awesome. it, you know, but that, those are the things that, um, that I've learned in traveling. Awesome. Good to know. And yeah, totally about the journey. It's not about the destination and getting there. Uh, mm -hmm. So two, two brief last questions. One is, um, if you will write one word or one sentence, uh, like to, to put on a letter for humanity to open that in 100 years time, what, you, what would you write to humanity? In one word? One word, one sentence, humanity. whatever comes to mind. Unity. Unity. Yeah. Compassion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Wow. Uh, yeah, that especially for me today uh, is is like just is just like a seed that gets keep uh, getting nurtured and watered. Because yeah. I heard a podcast episode of Brené Brown and Susan David, and they were talking about compassion. Uh, I got a, a news that uh, the mother of a, de a friend, a dear friend of my sister, um, her mother passed away. And uh, yeah, compassion, compassion about uh, others, about ourselves also. Thank you. Thank you for, for sharing that. Uh, so the last, last yeah. question before we go. Um, if you would meet a stranger, someone that has like stopped in time, is like on hold, on a pause, and it's like almost as if the person was uh, on a red light, uh, you know, the traffic red light, uh, but in her life, she's on hold. She's waiting for someone, for something, uh, and she's waiting for the green light. She's waiting to receive, to get the green light. If you will give that person the green light to move on, to go, to do something else, to, to live their life, what will be your green light to give that person? Something that, that you will do, something that you will say, what will be your green light? Oh, wow, I don't know about that one. So the green light is obviously um, something that you can offer somebody so that they yeah. could maybe move on. Mm. Um, it might be forgiveness in some cases. Um, and sometimes, um, I guess that's what I thought of when you said that is like sometimes people are stuck in a certain situation. And even if you're not, um, 
you could offer them forgiveness in a way, even if you're not the person that caused them harm. Yeah. You know, just giving someone permission to move on. Sometimes people don't feel like they can because they don't, they haven't gotten that permission. Yeah. So um, I think that's a, that could be the one that would be a green light for me. Yeah. Uh, encur encouragement. Yeah. A little bit of encouragement to, okay. Yeah. You know, uh, positive, uh, you know, there's um, enough negative in the world, but uh, sometimes people have their ability, but they just don't know they have the ability. So if you can, mm -hmm. you know, convince them and give them encouragement where they can see past, you know, that red light, then that may be all they need to keep moving down the road. Awesome. Yeah, I also believe that. Also, that's, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you for being here. Thank you for your time, for your energy, for your sharing. Fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was amazing. And I can't I wait really until we're in good. the same room. We exactly. miss you, Phil. Exactly. Uh, when we fly into Lisbon, the next time I'm going to come running out of the airport to see you. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll give a, a big hug. That's for, right. Uh, yeah. To, yeah. Yeah, to, 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 yeah, with all of this between. Thank you so much. Uh, that's, uh, every, that's everything for now. People watching here on Instagram and then on Facebook. It uh, was lovely to, be, uh, to have you watching and uh, listening. And if you're watching this later, either on the podcast or on this video, uh, reach out and uh, there, there is a way. There is a way for you to move on and for you to deal with whatever you have been dealing with so far. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Bill. Bye-bye for now to everyone bye -bye. that is watching. Okay. Just finishing the conversation here and here.